I am Duncan MacLeod, born 400 years ago in the highlands of Scotland. I am immortal, and I am not alone. For centuries we have waited for the time of the gathering, when the stroke of a sword and the fall of a head will release the power of the quickening. In the end, there can be only one. Seven out, line away, don't stay paid. You're relieved, you don't pay. It's early. I said you were relieved. Gustavo wants to see you. Joe, have a drink. I usually don't drink while I'm working the tables, Miss Gustafson. You're through working the tables, Joe. Okay, sure, I'll come in early tomorrow. She said you're through working the tables, Joe. Finito. Hey, if this is about that guy last night, he was just on a roll. $50,000 of the house's money is more than a roll, Joe. It's a friggin' avalanche. Tell him the rules, Clinch. Tell him rule number one. Customer shall not go home with too much of Mrs. Gustafson's money. He was watching me real close. I couldn't switch the dice. Well, maybe you didn't want to, Joe. Maybe the guy was a friend of yours. Well, you know me better than that. I don't have any friends that I like that much. Oh, well, that's very sad. But we believe you. Tell him why we believe him, Clinch. This big winner disappeared last night. Skipped town without so much as even checking out of his hotel. Ain't that a bitch. Mm. Which means if you were working with him, he skipped out on you, too. Tell him his responsibilities, Clinch. You are responsible for your table. You are responsible for the 50 grand. And I know you want to pay me back. 50,000 is a lot of money. I think that's my point, Joe. Yeah, I think that's exactly my point. I'll need some time. Oh, sure, Joe, we understand that. Uh, tell him how much time, Clinch. You can count to five. Sure you can, Joe. Five days. One, two, three, four, five. Ah! <laughs> Good afternoon, West Side Orphanage. I've got Richard Ryan's file right here, but I have no record of anyone having asked for it. For uh, Dr. Uh, James Jones, uh, Crosstown address. Hey, that's all I know. We're not supposed to release orphanage files without authorization. There are laws regarding confidentiality. Guy's a doctor. Sounds sweet to me. Nobody's asking you. Hey, I'm just the messenger. Just which company did you say you worked for? Uh, look, uh, look for yourself. You come out here! You can't take them! Security! Oh, right there! Uh, the Harold, uh, what's the problemo? You steal that? Uh, before I answer that, Harold, have you had the mandatory course in prudent and appropriate use of force? Stop talking trash and turn around so I can off your ass. I guess that means no. No, lightning lift! Uh, uh, Harold, this is uh, all a test of your uh, security here. Uh, I'm an undercover agent with the Public Works Special Investigation Unit. Uh, cuffs are a little tight, Harold, but that's okay. According to my stopwatch, your response time was well within our codes. You should be very happy about this, Harold. Uh, shut up. Uh, Harold, you forgot the file. Undercover agent, that's good, Richie. Whoa, we in a bad mood? Wait, you just got back from the island, right? So maybe that's it. Island fever. 
Why do you open it, Richie? Or maybe you had a fight with Tessa. You know women. <laughs> Who can figure them out anymore? Why the orphanage? That was the question, right? Right. Eh, you know, uh, return to the old stomping ground. I spent a year or so there when I was like five. Then I did this whole foster home drill. Hi, kids. This is your new foster brother, Richie. Treat him just like one of the family. Not. Come on, Tessa's worried. Tell you why he stole the file? I could guess. He wants to know where he comes from. Why can't they just tell him? Because it's against the law. Besides, maybe they don't know. Why do you say that? No reason. You look hot. Art can be hard work. No, I meant you look hot. Maybe we can help Richie find out who his parents are. I don't think that's a good idea. Why not? Use the gauge. I, I, I didn't ask you for help because it, like, it, it, it takes a while to develop that ask for help reflex, okay? Did you find something in those files that you didn't already know? I just got a peek. You know, I saw a name, Emily Ryan, deceased. You think she was your mother? I don't know. I already knew she was dead. I remember... I was real little, but... But, hey, I uh, scored a three-pointer on my old man at the buzzer just before the rent-a-cop grabbed me. You learned something about your father? Yeah, um, he and Emily were still married when she died, so I guess that means he is my father. Richie, if he was your father, don't you think he would have contacted you by now? When I was a kid, I made up a story. I pretended he was like a, a spy or something, doing dangerous stuff behind the Iron Curtain or whatever. That's why I couldn't just, like, put in a collect call and say, I want to talk to my son, Richie Ryan, the all-American boy. Can I pass right now? Kid stuff. Nah, who knows? I mean, maybe he's tried to find me. It's not like my face is on a carton of milk. Gather the men. No, I'm good. Father, I... No, no, no. Save your strength. You fought well. You fought like I'm a cloud. I wanted to be part of the victory. I, you will. You will be part of a great victory. I always thought there'd be more. Dunk. Dunk. Your name will be mentioned with honor in our own Duncan McLeod of the Clan McLeod. Bless him. Bless him. We have suffered a great loss. We have lost a kinsman. And a son. He led you fearlessly, with no thought of himself. And now you must go back to the fight, with no thought but of him. 
with no name on your lips but his, Duncan McLeod! Duncan McLeod! It, it is a miracle. No, it is the work of the demon master of the world below. Father! No, you're no better mine. You're no my son. You're not my son! You think we should have looked for him then? Who? Jack Ryan, Richie's father. Yes. Everybody should have a chance to have a father. What? I wouldn't lay hands on finding him. I started telling you everything that ever happened to me. Let me be the judge of that. My father couldn't grasp what had happened. <laughs> Who could? Man, he must have freaked. I mean, there you were, all of a sudden, on your feet again. Zombie in a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I was more terrified than he was. We were a primitive clan. Primitive and superstitious. You know, fear ruled our lives. What lay on the other side of the mountains was beyond imagination. Then can you blame your father? I did it first. There were days in that first bit of winter in the Highlands that I just wanted to die. But I couldn't. And my family problems are history. Riches are here and now. You know there's a proverb in northern India? If you go hunting tigers, be sure you're prepared to find one. Meaning, I might not like what I find. Why do you want to know that? Hmm? After all this time, there must be a reason why your father hasn't contacted you. Think about that, Richie. I have. Do you remember anything before the orphanage? Not much. There was a woman. Your mother, Emily Ryan? I don't know. I guess she must have been. <laughs> I can't picture her face, but I remember every Friday we used to go to the post office. I never figured out why, but I loved it. Man, I wanted to be a mailman something fierce when I grew up. <laughs> and then right down the street, there was this candy store. It was run by this sweet old guy called Stubbs. I remember Stubbs because I couldn't manage his name, so I used to call him Mr. Tubby. <laughs> he thought that was hysterical. He was as thin as a pencil. She'd buy me licorice, and he'd let me look at the pictures in the comics. After all, I couldn't read yet. Why remember that? What was so special about the candy store? One day, Mom, uh, Emily, was, uh, chatting with Mr. Stubbs, and suddenly she put her hand to her forehead, said something like, I feel funny, and then she just fell to the floor and didn't move. I thought she was playing a game, so I'm like pushing her and laughing, and, and then the ambulance came, and lots of people running around, and, and they took her away. Mr. Stubbs picked me up in the air, says, well, lad, what are they gonna do with you? That's why I remember Mr. Stubbs' candy store. What part of town was this in? You got me there. Uh, I was four going on five. Who knew geography? Could barely find my way to the bathroom. Mr. Stubbs' candy store. Well, it's a start. It's not gonna be in there. Guy was pretty old even back then. Must have cashed in his chips by now. Yeah, but you said the candy store was near a post office.
on three moves, Harry. Mr. Stubbs? That's right, son. My name is Richie Ryan. Pleased to meet you. Lady at the retirement home said I'd find you here. <laughs> Every afternoon. You used to run a candy store on Baltimore Street. For 30 years. Sold it last March. Now it's some sort of game store with a bunch of weirdos hanging around. I remember your place. I used to come in when I was a kid. Oh, what are you now, an old man? No, I mean <laughs> when I was real young. Do you remember Emily Ryan? Emily? Of course. Well, that's reaching back some. Licorice. You used to love licorice, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were a cute little kid, yeah. Always gave you little extras, I recall. Emily, yeah, she came in every Friday. I used to cash her check for her. You have a great memory, Mr. Stubbs. Oh, well, people who came into my store got service with capital S. Never forgot them, never forgot me. That's the way I ran my business. Poor Emily. Yeah, I remember that day as if it was yesterday. She collapsed right in front of me there in the store. Brain hemorrhage. And she's barely 30. I wasn't sure if I remembered it right. I'm afraid so, lad. Next thing I hear, they'd whisk you off to an orphanage. Wasn't there a Mr. Ryan? Oh, sure, yeah. But they'd split up by then. Oh, yeah, I still see Jack hanging around. He lives here in this city? Well, as far as I know. He uh, used to be at the Spinning Wheel Hotel over in Madison. Uh-huh. Thanks very much, Mr. Stubbs. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. For Golden, McLeod! Probably a CIA front, you know. Deep cover. That is about as deep as it gets. Well, no, Mac. If this is my dad, I need to do this alone. <clears throat> On the other hand, we still could catch the second half of the basketball game. What? Richie, it's up to you. He probably doesn't even live here anymore. Jack Ryan? I had never heard of him. But then again, I only lived here for a couple of months. He might have lived here before me. Who would know? Think he might have left the landlord a forwarding address? Are you crazy? You move in here, you put your rent in the drop box, you move out. People like to remain anonymous, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you never knew him? You're too young to be a cop, kid. What's your interest in finding this Jack Ryan character? I think he may be my father. Maybe? I never knew my folks. Let me tell you something, kid. I knew my father. And I wish to God I'd never laid eyes on the bastard. You might be better off not knowing. Ah! <sighs> Happened to your finger? I broke it playing chess. Funny. Never thought of that as a contact sport. Listen, if you do come across a Jack Ryan, can you give me a call? Antiques. I'll keep my ears open. Thanks. Appreciate it. Stay cool. Oh, listen. What's your name and... Joe. It hurts like hell. Well, then I'm a happy man. 
Let's talk. Man should always take pride in his work, Joe. I read books on anatomy for months when I got this job. I know the human form from head to toe. I know what breaks. I know what hurts. And I know what bursts when you hit it just right. <laughs> you know what day this is today, Joe? Huh? I mean, besides laundry day? It's Wednesday. Right. Day number two. I don't know. I don't see any money around here. Stay where you are, Joe. I don't see 50 grand in neatly stacked bills waiting for me to take to Mrs. Gustafson. I don't know, what do you, what do you got it hidden here in the underwear, huh? I haven't got it yet. I'm sorry. I didn't quite catch that. I said I haven't got the money yet. Oh. Ah! I, oh. oh no, for the love of God. God doesn't love you, Joe. Nobody loves you. Now, you know what happens on day two. Please, please, I swear I will get you the money. I know where to put my hands on it, I swear. I've been talking to people. Who you been talking to, Joe? Well, that kid, you must have seen him on your way in, huh? He's connected, he's got rich friends, they're gonna front me the 50, but tomorrow! Well, that's great. But tomorrow's tomorrow, and today is today. I'm no tomorrow! Oh! Here's what we're gonna do. Seeing as I'm such a busy man, and these little visits are so time-consuming, I'm gonna take you at your word. I'm gonna trust that you're gonna have the money here by tomorrow. Because if you don't, Ah! I'll have your whole hand. I'll cut it off, and I'll watch you eat it. Finger by finger. <sighs> With a little ketchup on the side. Have a nice day, Joe. Hello? Hey, how you doing? You, uh, you found something already? No, not exactly. So, it's, it's great to see you, but, like, what are you doing here? Oh, this is gonna be tough for me. Uh-huh. I've never been exactly a, a steady guy. Life's never been easy. Welcome to the club. In fact, I spent most of my life behind the eight ball. Look, I don't mean to be rude, but uh, it's getting a little boring. <sighs> I lied to you earlier, kid. Um, I changed my name, thought it would change my life. And by the time I was ready to find you, it was too late and I was too old. You see, Richie, my real name is Jack Ryan. I'm your father. Your Uncle Bart, he paid his way through school by picking up side bets at all the Cleveland Indian home games. He'd uh, pick up the money from his regulars as he went up and down the stadium selling hot dogs. And then well, the next day, he'd pay the winners back by putting the money inside the hot dog bun and just sliding it down the aisle. <laughs> what you wanted to hear about your family. Why did you leave? I have thought about that for a lot of years. I just had this wild hair. I had these dreams. And you didn't want a kid around to screw him up. It is not that, kid. The fact is, 
The fact is, when my son, when you were born, I couldn't have come home if I'd wanted. I used to think you were a spy off on some mission. <laughs> well, it was something like that. Mission. <laughs> yeah, it was in Leavenworth. And then when I got out, my wife, your, your mother, she'd already taken you for parts unknown. She died. Emily died. I thought you knew that. I'm really sorry to hear that, kid. I just, I just thought that well, since... Well, story of my life, kid. They'll put it on my tombstone. Old Jack Ryan. Never had a clue. What was she like? My mother. She was a real gem, kid. She's patient. Funny. She had a great sense of humor, that woman. And she liked kids. She wanted a real big family. Smart. Too smart for a guy like me. But you left her. You loved her. You knew she was having your kid. And you left her. How can anybody do that? It all comes down to that same thing, doesn't it, kid? It comes down to that one thing that changes your whole life forever. Look, if I could live my whole life over again, but at the time, I, th I thought I was a guy with ambition. I thought I saw a chance. It was sitting up on a shelf like, like one of those little Russian dolls, hollow. You know those? Yeah. And you open it, and then there's another one inside, only yeah. there's nothing there. And then you open the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and next thing you know, you're 53 years old, and you're holding this tiny little doll. And you look at it, and it ain't much, but you think maybe inside this is a dime. Come on, let me buy you a hot dog, huh? Hey, you're looking so serious. Sorry. Is he still here? They are still out. They certainly have enough to talk about. Maybe. What are you thinking? Nothing. I'm going out. OK. Don't tell me anything. Ever. Richie looks for his long-lost father. Richie finds his long-lost father. It's too easy. Why would he do it? They aren't giving out medals to runaway fathers. Maybe he wants something else. I want to ask around. that like you had lots of practice. Oh, and you are? Oh, just another friend of Joe's. Oh, I thought Jack Ryan lived here. Jack Ryan. Maybe that is his real name. A traveling man like him needs a lot of names. They get used up in a hurry. What do you want with them? For a man who just broke in here, you sure do ask a lot of questions. Joe, Jack, if you like, wanted some advice on his Financial future? Doesn't look like he's gonna show up, though. Always nice to meet a mutual friend of Joe's. Jack's. Whatever. Nice meeting you.
So this guy's like nuts because of fake I made, so I go in for a clean layup. You know, if I had known that you like basketball so much, I would have got his ticket. Nah, it's okay. Little here okay for you? Yeah, well, it's not exactly Trump Tower. Mac. I let myself in. I hope you don't mind. No, no. So, so you're Mac, huh? Richie's been telling me a lot about you. But glad to meet you. Taking real good care of my boy. Yeah, I wanted to meet you too. Yeah, well, now you have. I guess this place doesn't give a very good impression. Hey, guy lives where he can. Mac's been around. Yeah, I can tell that just looking at him. Yeah, you look like you've been around too. He should hear some of his stories. Oh, I'd like that. Nothing that'd impress a guy like you. Well, you never know. Truth could be stranger than fiction. Yeah, that is what they say. Well, I guess I better get going. Hey, come on, stick around. Jack will tell you about my cousins and stuff. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, there's no need for you to rush off. Another time. Oh, there was a guy in here looking for you. Big guy, long hair. Said he was your financial advisor. Hey, he's just an old pal of mine. A real joker. Well, nice to meet you, Jack. Richie's a good kid. Uh, you don't have to tell me that. Good. Listen, I, uh, I need to go ask him a couple of things about work. I'll be right back. OK, I'll just straighten up here. No, Mac, 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 Mac. Hey, hey, what was that all about in there? You treated him like he was rat poison. Rich, he's a... He's my old man, OK? He may not be much in your eyes, but he's all I got here. If I can make it work, what is your problem? We'll talk later, OK? Uh, yes, I'll need it by next Friday. Yes. <laughs> that would be perfect. Goodbye. Oh, that was quite a walk. Yeah, well, we had to go to a couple of stores. Jack needed some things. Uh, listen, Tessa, um, I know this is weird, but I was wondering if Jack could stay here for a few days. If it's any bother, any at all, I, I can stay somewhere else. What happened to your apartment? Well, I'm a little overdue with the rent and the landlord while he's taking my things. Jack's between jobs. Just a couple of days, honest. We'll have to ask Mac. Yeah. Where'd he go, anyway? Your drink, Mrs. Gustafson. He wasn't there, but somebody else was. A man who said he was looking for Jack Ryan. Maybe he was. Maybe he got the wrong address. Or maybe he knows something we don't. Hey, you followed me. Maybe you weren't looking for Joe, huh? Maybe you were looking for me. I just want some information about the man living in that apartment, whatever his name is. He owes you money, right? <laughs> we'll get in line or get lost. What do you know about Joe Scanlon or... Uh, hey, I uh... told you! <laughs> <laughs> Go for your gun and I'll make you eat it. I asked you a question. Joe Scanlon worked for me. Now he owes me a lot of money. And just remember, if you're trying to collect from him too, we're first. Thank you. Oh, get up, Clinch. Making a spectacle of yourself. Hey. Where did you learn that? From the people that invented it. I, uh... Oh. <laughs> Hope you won't be too uncomfortable sleeping on the floor. I could sleep lengthwise on a railroad tie in half. <laughs> I'm just afraid to breathe in here. I might break something that costs more than my life is worth. This ain't even the expensive stuff. Come look at this. This is my favorite, solid gold. That's beautiful. 
So's the price. How can you be so sure he's not Jack Ryan? He's told Richie so many things about his life, about his mother. He's sold you too, hasn't he? He's a con man. He wants something. What? Tessa, take a look around. He sees the shop. He sees Richie living here. He sees a meal ticket. You can't see any other reason, can you? This man left his wife, his family. Maybe he wants something he lost. And you believe that? People can change. Oh, they sure can. It takes centuries. I hate arguing with you. You always oh, bring Tessa, all that. Come on. For 400 years, you've been looking over your shoulder, and now you, oh. you don't trust anybody. He's just a human being. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. It's okay. It's just... It's Richie we gotta worry about now. This Jack or Joe, he became a father too quickly. Just when he needed a place to hide. Someone's gotta talk to Richie. Can't it wait until morning? What's the matter? He took it. He took the mask. I give the police a full description of the mask, kind of. Jack or Joe or whatever his name is. Now they're out there in the car laughing their ass off at me. Nobody's laughing at you, Richie. It's not like I really believed he was my father. It's not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the old guy lays down a pretty good line, but who do you think you're talking to here? <laughs> Made up all that stuff about my mother, too. He probably didn't even know her. Like, it really matters where you come from. Richie, it matters. Of course, it matters. Gee, they smell a Tusca. Steady, lads. Father! It's the devil! Father! It is me, Duncan. He recognizes me, but my own flesh and blood does not. They let me wander away from all men. You'll not make me thus, be it from heaven or hell. I am your son! No! And you never were! The night my lady wife gave birth to my only son, stillborn, I was brought into her chamber by a peasant woman, a poor child, to replace that which was lost. I do not believe you. Is that truth? Or oh, God strike me dead! And when the midwife looked into your eyes, I for it was you the pattern brought in. She cringed back in fear and said you were a changeling left by the forest demons and we should cast you out for the dogs. But you did not. No. I saw the look on my lady's face. We took you in and banished the midwife. May God forgive me. He buried my wee son and put you in his place. And no man ever knew you were not of my blood. You are my heir! Where do I come from? Where do I come from? 
Where do I come from? Where do I come from? Where do I come from? Where? Where do I come from? You never found out who your real parents were? No. But after a couple of hundred years, you get over it. One day, so will you. Yeah, it's me, Joe Scanlon. I got something for you that's worth more than what I owe you. A lot more. Yeah, I'll be there, but the cops are looking for me. It's gonna take a while. Yeah, I said I'll be there. Mac, Richie's gone. I think I know where. Joe, Jack, whoever you are, open the door, let me in. Oh. oh, damn. Damn that kid. Come on, buddy. The airport. Well, what have we here? Everybody's looking for our man Joe, including this guy. Friend of yours? Never heard of him. Hey, what? be nice to Mrs. Gustafson. Scanlon said he was getting the money from this guy. So you decided to cut out the middleman. Yeah, why not? Money? Hey, this guy ripped off my friends. He put on his afterburners and split. I hope for your sake that isn't true. It isn't. I've got what you want. And it is worth four times what I owe you. If that thing's as hot as I think it is, we'll be lucky to fence it for 10% of that. Then I'll fence it myself. I can do better than that. What, and you leave Bart Simpson here as collateral? <laughs> oh, no deal. The kid leaves now. He'll keep his mouth shut. Who's he to you? He's my dad. Run, kid. No! No! I know. Look, I'm sorry. It's okay. We're leaving now. You did what you had to do. Listen, what we gotta do now. <laughs> Come on, go. Clinch, you're fired. Hey, Richie. Hi. Is this a seasonal thing that we rearrange everything in here? An artist should never grow complacent. Change is good. You compensating for me. Right. Did Joe get off all right? I put him on a bus to Tucson. What's in Tucson? A little doll with a diamond in it. I, uh, I saw Mr. Stubbs in the park on my way back. I wanted to ask him some more stuff about my mother. Turns out that check she got every Friday was from a foster agency. She was a foster mother. My foster mother. So I guess I'll never know where I came from. I'm so sorry, Richie. Hey, you get to decide who you are. Not many people get that chance. You got her tuned up nice. Thought yeah. you coming now. I noticed. <laughs> Kind of makes a statement, you know? 
Yeah, well, what am I saying when I make this statement? I don't know. Uh, here I am, world, something like that. Well, that's your statement. <laughs> My statement is more, I'm just passing through. Ah, you're just passing through. Hey, you want me to tune it back down? It's your car. Mm -hmm. Just one more time. Go for it. Ha, 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 ha.